Hello, this is Gary Pinnell, and we'd like to look at John chapter 8 today. And so I encourage you to uh, get out your Bible if you haven't yet, or just follow along with us as we read. But also, I would like to encourage you to be reading your Bible through uh, from the Old Testament as well. And you say, well, I didn't get started at the beginning of the year. In that case, here's what I suggest, that you start on today's date, and then uh, a year from now, you'll have read through the Bible. Yes, hello, Esther. Greetings to you as well. And so we're looking at the passages in the Old Testament that you should be reading today, and that would be Deuteronomy chapter 8, Psalms 148, John 8, and also Proverbs 8. So let me encourage you to do that. Uh, Gabriel, it's good to see you on. Um, so we do pray for these people that are in India and Africa and other places in the world that are watching from time to time and uh, especially here united states canada and other places let's go to uh, john chapter 8 here now and of course john is talking about the ministry that jesus had as he was getting prepared himself going to the cross uh, but uh, we're not quite there yet but along the way here is the things that he did he came to this earth to die for us we know that but he also uh, showed god his father by his actions to people but jesus went to the mount of olives now now early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. So first, when you get up, he would go and have a time of prayer at the Mount of Olives. And I've been there. We spent, I think, at least an hour there in prayer. It was so wonderful uh, just to be where Jesus uh, would have been and times of prayer. And then also uh, he gets up and he goes in and he teaches the people in the temple, in the temple area, even though the religious leaders, they didn't like it. They probably slept in, <laughs> I'm just joking. But uh, when Jesus was there, he was able to teach them. And so the, the religious leaders knew that they would find Jesus there at the temple. And then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now, isn't it interesting how that this just happened to happen? I personally believe they set this woman up uh, because, uh, first of all, where is the man? If she was caught in the act of adultery, where takes two people? The man is not there. Is it possible? I'm not saying that this is what happened, but is it possible that they enticed a woman one of the religious leaders who were uh, murder uh, out to get murder Jesus, and uh, they were in adultery. We know that uh, some too, uh, just by their very uh, actions and so on. It's it's clear that they were uh, immoral people, and so is it possible that one of the religious leaders? tempted her or they bribed somebody paid them and got them interested in committing adultery well 
we're not told, but we are told some more, and it leads kind of to that direction. And we know that this is a trap, and let's see uh, what they are, they want. Now, Moses and the law, they said, commanded us that such should be stoned. Well, what do you say? Well, at this time, the Jewish peoples really did not have permission to stone without taking a person to court. Uh, the even stoning of Stephen was done against the law later on. Uh, and here now, uh, they were not stoning people as we know at that time because of the Roman leadership that was there. But this is what they wanted Jesus to do, is to stone this woman. This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. So they're trying to trap him. They have nothing he... Even later, Pilate said, I find no fault in him, but they can't find any fault either. So they're trying to make up something. Well, Moses said, you're supposed to stone them. They hadn't stoned anybody for a long time. Uh, but Jesus stooped down and rode on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Interesting, isn't it? So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Now, that's why I'm saying that it, it almost sounds like uh, Jesus here is saying, if uh, there's anybody here that you don't have any sin uh, similar to her, and this area of adultery. Uh, he didn't say that, but it kind of seems to indicate that, doesn't it? And so we see here that they're accusing her of things that they no doubt were involved in, and they, if not that sin, many other sins. <laughs> the sin of uh, hatred, of wanting to kill Jesus, and wanting to kill his apostles, and even uh, seems like yelling at Nicodemus, who told and reminded them when they were talking about Jesus that, do we judge a person? Uh, do we condemn a person before he's been judged? And now, uh, oh, are you one of them too? And that sort of thing. So they had hatred in their heart, if nothing else. But here, Jesus, continues and says, and again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Now it's interesting, isn't it, that he kept writing on the ground. We don't see any other place that he did that. Not saying that he never did that before, but uh, of course they didn't have a piece of paper there, or in those days they didn't use paper so much, uh, papyrus that we make books out of, or they made books out of, but a lot of times they would use like leather but he's writing in the dust on the ground and people have you know wondered well what did he write and there are several possibilities it's possible that he was writing the sins of each individual person of uh, the those leaders the pharisees that were there and others writing their sins okay it is possible that he's putting the Ten Commandments on the ground, uh, writing those. But at any rate, it has an effect on them, because look what happens there. Then those who heard it, uh, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last, See, these were wicked men. And you say, well, why do you call them wicked? Because they had hatred in their heart for Jesus without even uh, checking out who he really was. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, 
Where are your accusers? Where are those, excuse me, accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. All right. Now, Jesus had love and pity and mercy on this woman. And it seems that God is more concerned about people that are know that they're sinners than he is uh, than he is about people that they know they're sinners but they won't admit it it's like a person who has a problem with drinking and with alcohol and they won't admit it it just gets worse and worse because you have to admit you have a problem before you can be helped these people would not even admit that they were sinners but this woman knew she was a sinner and probably knew by now she had been set up but still she knew that it was wrong what she was doing and so Jesus forgave her and he told her not to sin again not to do what she had been doing and that is the way God is with us he loves us but he wants us to admit we're sinners, that we have a need for salvation. And that's why he's come into the world. He's like a spotlight. Uh, I think of people who, uh, when they've, oh, they have shows and so on where they're investigating and find out about crimes and they'll, they'll go into a darkened room and take a bright flashlight and go around and look in the corners and on the floor and all over well that's what God is doing for us he's looking at our hearts and he wants to point out the sin that is in our life first of all he needs to show us that we are a sinner in need of salvation and then we can be saved and so this woman uh, he was pointing out to her uh, that uh, she go and sin no more that he was forgiving her. And that's what God is doing for us. He forgives us. And so the religious leaders, they couldn't be forgiven because they didn't even believe that they were sinners other than Jesus pointed it out to them uh, and told the, for the one that without sin, you could uh, stone her first and start stoning her. But obviously none of them were without sin, but now uh, they needed to realize that they're into the sin of not admit admitting Jesus as God. Uh, and they're in rebellion against God. But Jesus sends her away. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees, okay, now, there was those that had brought this woman and Jesus had spoken to them and told them the first without uh, the one without sin then you can uh, start the stoning and so on but there was others those left but evidently there were others still around watching what was happening and so on so after Jesus said that he was the light of the world then they have some things to say. Verse 13. Therefore, are the Pharisees therefore said to him, uh, you bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Well, if you're having a trial or something, you do have to have two or three witnesses. And so that's what they're saying to Jesus. You're just talking about yourself. Well, Jesus is gonna prove that's not true. Jesus answered and said to them, even if I bear witness of myself, which, you know, you can tell some people that, uh, about yourself, uh, my witness is true. So he is sharing the truth, for I know where I came from and where I am going. He came from heaven, and he's going back to heaven. 
but you do not know where I come from and where I am going. You judge according to the flesh, and I judge no one. So at this point, Jesus is not judging people. Uh, Jesus is helping them to see that they need uh, salvation. But we also know that there is the uh, fact that Jesus is pointing out who he is, that he is the Son of God, but he's also uh, going to show that there's other ways that they can see that as well. And so we will just look at that in just a minute. But Jesus' message is always the same, that he is the Son of God, that he loves us, and that he wants to save us. And uh, I think about also the religious leaders that... Um, says Jesus was talking about one time he said they two went down to pray one was a, a Pharisee and one was a tax collector and as they were praying the one uh, lifted up his head to heaven and like he's prideful and is he's better than this other person said oh God I'm glad that I'm not like you know, this other person, the tax collector, and uh, I give my tithes I, and uh, for everything, and then also, uh, I'm just, I'm not a sinner, you know, and I, I'm glad I'm not like them, the, those sinners and so on. But then the, the tax collector, it says, could not even look up to heaven. He uh, beat himself on the chest and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And Jesus says, who do you think went down to the house justified? And they realized it's a tax collector because he would, had humbled himself before the Lord. And that's what I was thinking about also here as uh, the those that had brought the woman caught in adultery and how God loves us but he wants us to admit our sin, first of all, and because he's the light of the world, but also he's going to show them that it's not just himself that is uh, a witness of himself. Um, and he's telling them, you don't even, you're not uh, good judges yourself as far as you, you judge according to the flesh, but Jesus, being God, can judge righteously everything. But at this point, he's been sent to uh, save, and he didn't come to judge the world. He said that in John chapter 3, verse 17, at this point. Later, he will come as judge, but to save. And so he's going to give, though, the other witnesses of himself, not just himself. He says, it is also written in the law that the testimony of two men is true. So you have to have two or three, but usually they had two, and that would be sufficient. Okay? So he said, I am one. So he gives his testimony of himself, who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Okay, now that, that kind of gets them because... Uh, they don't believe that God is his father, and but he is. And whether they believe it or not, it's the truth. And so he says, I witness of myself that I am who I am, that I've said that, that I am the son of God, in other words, and who else? My father. Uh, he's making it clear that uh, he is the son of God. Then they said to him, where is your father? And Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. So those 
those that are truly worshiping the Lord, they know that Jesus is God. And of course, if you say, well, I believe in God, but you don't believe in Jesus. No, you don't truly believe in God because his word has made it clear uh, who he is. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and will die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. So these, even uh, in 70 AD, the Romans surrounded Jerusalem and killed men, women, and children, over two million people at that time. And I believe some of these were some of those that were probably killed at that point. Now, it's interesting because uh, uh, many of the Christians at that point in 70 AD had fled from Jerusalem uh, and scattered because of the persecution. Uh, but these people are going to stay there, and you know what? They're going to die in their sins, many of them, because they will not receive Jesus as the Messiah and their Savior. Uh, so the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. And so they're really starting to get pointed with their accusations. We're going to do a lot of reading here now. And he said to them, you are from beneath. In other words, they're following Satan and they're on their way to hell. I am from above. He's from heaven. You are of this world. This world you make is your home. I am not of this world. He came from heaven. Therefore, I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. John uh, said also, or gives Jesus a statement that he said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He's the only way. If you don't accept Jesus as your Savior, you're not going to heaven. Even if you think you're good, you're not. You no know, one's good enough to get to heaven. You'd have to be perfect. And you know what? Jesus is the only way to heaven. Through him can we be saved. There is none other, none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved, it says. Then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. And I speak to the wor world those things which I heard from him, from his Father God. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, in other words, when they crucify him along with the Romans, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things, and he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him. Praise the Lord. Uh, that were standing around <laughs> listening to this discussion. Then Jesus said to uh, those Jews who believed him, If you abide in me, in my, uh, in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's interesting that all the attacks of Satan backfire. If you look here, uh, the religious leaders thought they would convince probably the ones that were left after the others went away, uh, those who were left and challenging Jesus in front of the people, 
they thought, oh, we'll get the people to realize that he's not really who he says he is. He's not really the Son of God. He's not really the Messiah, and so on. But actually, just the opposite happened, didn't it? Many believed in him that were standing there listening to this discussion. And then, uh, even though the Pharisees and the religious leaders didn't, the, uh, many of the people, many of the common people did. I heard just recently, it was interesting, there are the Satanists here in the United States, which are getting more and more people to follow them. They had their convention, it's called the Satanist Convention, of all things. But there were Christians that had been praying, and uh, they went right in among the people, uh, the Satanists, and they gave out literature and so on, and actually led 87 of them to the Lord. You see how Satan does things, but it backfires on him. And that's what is happening here. There are people that are getting saved. Uh, isn't that neat? Uh, last year where we were as Gideons, uh, there was a shooting and the Lord did a miracle and moved us so that uh, we wouldn't be shot. And because uh, we were set up at a different location than where we'd normally been, but seven people were shot in Cinco de Mayo celebrations where we were last year. And so we had to stop uh, giving out the New Testaments, which could only give like about 340 or so. But then this year, uh, it just seems like they, uh, the first night, uh, over a, a thousand were given out on the first day. And then yesterday, or Saturday, we were there. And I think over a thousand was given then, and probably Sunday, a thousand New Testaments. And so what Satan thought, oh, I'll stop them from giving out New Testaments and so on. No, it's backfired. And now the people even more so want to have the New Testaments and the Word of God. And uh, so everything that Satan does backfires. Don't uh, worry just keep serving the Lord, trusting Him. It seems like He's trying to, He is stopping, trying to stop things, but He can't. He can't stop God's Word from going out. Many times people have tried to destroy the Bible. They can't destroy the Bible either. So we're going to have to mainly read now because we're running out of time. Um, and so uh, many uh, believed at that point, and as he spoke these words, uh, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants. Now these are the Pharisees that are still there, uh, religious leaders. And they pipe up on descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be uh, made free? <laughs> Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever come, uh, commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. So these people aren't believing. They're not going to heaven, even though they're religious, okay? Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. I speak what I have seen with my Father, and you do, and you do what you have seen with your Father. He's pointing out the devil as their father. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. And Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. In other words, you're physical children, but you're not spiritual children of Abraham because he had faith in God. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God, the Father. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Okay. 
So now they're saying that Jesus was born of fornication. Remember we said that uh, this is what they claimed about Mary uh, when uh, she had Jesus and she was a virgin and she uh, was pregnant when uh, there was the, they were engaged but they hadn't come together, Joseph and Mary. And so this rumor got around that uh, Jesus was an illegitimate child. Well, uh, that's what Mary had put up with through the years. That's what Jesus had been uh, probably taunted when he was a child or at other times. Uh, and now this is what they're saying about Jesus. And so the blasphemy of it. And um, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceed forth and came from God. Nor have I come from of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. You see, uh, people in the world have been deceived by Satan. They are spiritually dead. And unless uh, they respond in faith to the message of salvation, they can't be saved. You are of your father, the devil. And so if you do not receive Jesus, you're in Satan's family. And the desire of your father, you want to do. You, he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Okay, they couldn't even point out any sin that he had. He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Then the Jews answered and said to him, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan? You see how they thought of the Samaritans? And Jesus loved the Samaritans. He had just gone there uh, recently and led many to the Lord and have a demon. And now they're calling demon possessed. And Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. And I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Then the Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham is dead and the prophets and you say, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Who do you make yourself out to be? And Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father who honors me, of whom you say that uh, he is your God. You, yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I say I do not know him, I shall be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. You see, Jesus, when he was one of the three angels that uh, went to visit Abraham. And uh, by the way, Abraham is not dead. Uh, his body is sleeping, but his spirit is with the Lord. And, and even Moses and Elijah appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus a short time after this. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see me, and he saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and, and have you seen Abraham? See, this is the point. Jesus is eternal. He existed from eternity past. And just he's now taken on a body, uh, but uh, they cannot even accept that. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And they know that term as the term that 
uh, was given to Moses and when he was at the burning bush. And that is, it's a term for God. Then they took up stones to throw at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them. He just walked right through them and so passed by. And so we see uh, the very same thing uh, to this day. And many Jews will not believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But if they won't, they will not be saved. And so we've run out of time today. But uh, let's go to prayer. Father, we just thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to receive your son Jesus as Lord and Savior. Since he died for our sins and rose again. And we know that he is your son. And we come to him alone for salvation through his precious blood. And we pray all these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. The Lord bless you.